Got His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Ruhakana Rugunda, Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Ruhakana Rugunda, Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda, and invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. President, Secretary General of UN, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, I wish to congratulate you on your election as President of the 74th Session of the United Nations General Assembly and assure you of Uganda's full support. My delegation is pleased to have an eminent African steering the work of this body and remains confident that you will lead the assembly effectively and also successfully. I would also like to thank His Excellency Maria Fernando Espinoza for her leadership of the 73rd session. I pay tribute to the Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, for his dedication and commitment to the work of the United Nations. Uganda welcomes the theme of this session. It reminds us that by putting eradication of poverty, improving livelihoods for all, and protecting our planet among its core objectives, the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda adopted in 2015 is ambitious, inclusive, and transformative. It seeks to leave no one behind. At the outset, I wish to thank the membership of the UN and, in particular, the group of 2077 and China for the support and accepting Uganda's offer to host the third South Summit in Kampala, Uganda. This will take place in April next year. We look forward to welcoming you all and working with you to strengthen and further revitalize our cooperation within the context of global partnerships for sustainable development. Uganda has prioritized poverty eradication and the provision of quality education in its national development plan through deliberate and targeted investments in agriculture, industrialization, strategic infrastructure like roads, railways, energy production, and human capital development. Uganda is mainstreaming the implementation of the SDGs, the main component of the agenda through partnerships and targeting resource mobilization from both domestic and external resources. Good progress has been made to integrate the SDGs into national, sectoral, and local government plans. And the progress of implementation is tracked through a national monitoring and evaluation system. The biggest challenge remains inadequate financing to implement the agenda. In order to mobilize domestic resources for SDGs implementation, Uganda is implementing a policy of promoting exports, attracting tourists and foreign investors, mobilizing external development resources at a concessional or favorable uh, terms and strengthening institutional capacity 
to enhance service delivery. We are also committed to promoting integrated national financing mechanisms that shall lower the cost of borrowing and facilitate easier access to capital for priority areas such as agriculture, agro-processing, and also value addition. While we do our part, we call upon the development partners to fulfill their commitments and extend support in terms of timely and adequate means uh, so that implementation can be accelerated. Mr. President, setting a world on a sustainable course requires that we urgently address one of the defining challenges of our time, and that is climate change. Climate change affects each and every one of us. All over the world, we have witnessed environmental disasters. The recent ones in the Bahamas and in Mozambique led to considerable loss of life and also loss of property. These disasters showed the intensity and the ferocity of the changes taking place in our environment. We stand in solidarity with affected people as they continue with their recovery process. Uganda has not been immune either, as it has experienced prolonged droughts, melting of ice caps at its highest mountain, Mount Renzoli, floods, erratic rainfall, and also landslides, which have also uh, caused substantial loss of life. These frequent and recurring episodes have severe consequences uh, to our social economic growth, which is heavily dependent on natural resources. Despite being one of the least emitters of polluting gases, Uganda has taken bold measures to move into implementation of some concrete adaptation and mitigation actions, such as restoration of 64,000 hectares of wetlands to benefit 4 million farmers, reafforestation of over 200,000 hectares, generation of additional 20% of clean energy from renewable sources and promoting solar-powered irrigation schemes. Climate finance remains crucial because investments are required to significantly reduce emissions, to adopt to the adverse effects, and reduce the impacts of changing climate. We urge the developed countries to scale up their level of financial support as committed with a concrete roadmap to achieve the goal of jointly providing $100 billion annually by the year 2020 for mitigation and for adaptation. While the world focuses on climate change, biodiversity loss continues to escalate. However, climate change and biodiversity loss are intrinsically linked. Both must be addressed simultaneously. Biodiversity is part of an intricate web of life that provides 125 trillion dollars per year in ecosystem services to humans, like clean drinking water, clean air, fertile soils, climate stabilization, and the pollination 
of crops. Recent reports have shown that vulnerable populations will feel the effects of biodiversity loss first and will also benefit the most from avoiding any reversing land degradation. Uganda is a country with a large population that relies heavily on natural resources and we are therefore likely to feel some of the most effects first, such as loss of wetlands, loss of forests, and uh, even loss of species. That's why Uganda is supporting a proposal at the next year's convention on biological diversity that takes bold steps to create a sustainable planet, including protecting at least 30% of our lands and generating significantly more funding from governments and the private sector to protect nature on which our lives and our economies depend. Mr. President, Uganda is prioritizing universal health coverage to ensure that the population can access health services without risk of financial ruin or economic ruin or any form of impoverishment, no matter what their social economic uh, position may be. To demonstrate its commitment, the government has developed a universal health coverage roadmap which lays out the main policy actions for quick wins and setting the course for sustainable and faster progress. The government is expanding the community level health promotion and also community health prevention programs to reduce the preventable disease burden. It is enhancing specialized medical care services to address population needs, especially for non-communicable diseases. We are also addressing financial risk protection by ensuring the affordability and sustainability of quality health care services through legislation and aiding the institutionalization of a national health insurance scheme. We welcome the high-level meeting held a few days ago on universal health coverage and underscore the need to strengthen international solidarity and cooperation to make bigger and smarter investments in health to achieve universal health coverage by the year 2030. Mr. President, terrorism constitutes one of the most serious threats to international peace and security. Terrorism and violent extremism continue to bring death and suffering to innocent people. Terrorist groups such as Daesh, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, and Boko Haram continue to inflict death and to inflict devastation. They continue to manipulate young minds by exploiting real or perceived injustices and grievances. The international community must adopt to this changing landscape. We must be a unswerving in our resolve to combat terrorism and Uganda will continue to support and actively participate in global counter-terrorism efforts. Mr. President, Uganda remains committed to multilateralism as a means to achieving comprehensive and equitable solutions to global problems and also to global challenges. 
the 23rd agenda was truly a triumph for multilateralism. We proved that the global community can work together to address pressing issues facing humanity while making the necessary commitments for the benefit of all. We must redouble our collective efforts to seek common solutions to various pressing regional and global challenges, including unsettled situations and conflicts in various parts of the world, transnational organized crimes, and disease. As we have seen in the recent period, Ebola and other diseases know no boundaries. Recent outbreaks are a reminder of areas where countries in a region working with international community can work together to detect, to assess, notify, and respond to such public health threats and challenges. Uganda has been involved in such efforts, and we appreciate the support extended by the international community in dealing with the recent outbreak in our region. I wish to reiterate Uganda's readiness to strengthen international collaboration in this endeavor. Mr. President, our development and transformation cannot take place without peace and without security. These are prerequisites for social economic development and transformation. We should continue to give attention to supporting an environment that is peaceful, thus enabling us to concentrate on our growth and on our development. The UN should continue to support conflict prevention and resolution initiatives undertaken by regional and sub-regional organizations like the African Union and Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD. This partnership should be based on division of labor and burden sharing, complementarity, and mutual respect. Where such cooperation has been, we have seen positive results. We congratulate the government and the people of Sudan on the historic milestone of reaching an agreement between the forces for freedom and change and the Transitional Military Council that has ushered in a civilian-led transitional government in Sudan. We commend the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki, and the Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Dr. Abe Ahmed, who is the current chairperson of IGAD, for their tireless efforts. This was a clear demonstration of the pursuit of African solutions to African problems. In Somalia, we are pleased with the progress the country is making in finding peace and stability. These developments are taking place against the backdrop of government efforts to consolidate state institutions, including the building of its national security forces which will pave the way for the gradual drawdown and exit of AMISOM. As the country implements the transitional plan, it is essential that the international community addresses the mismatch between the commitment to generate the requisite Somali national security forces and AMISOM drawdown failure to carefully manage this process could imperil the political, 
and security gains already made. On South Sudan, we are pleased with the positive progress in the implementation of the revitalized agreement. We welcome the progress on the security front and urge the non-signatory groups to join the nation building efforts. We call on the international community to support the positive momentum and expedite their support for the completion of the remaining critical tasks. Mr. President, Uganda continues to support the efforts of the peoples of the colonies and non-self-governing territories to exercise their right to self-determination. We believe that to achieve decolonization, the voices of the people of these territories should be heard by all. We support the right of the people of Western Sahara, the only territory on the African continent, to self-determination on the basis of respect for the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations, international law, and relevant UN resolutions. Uganda supports the efforts of the UN Secretary General to achieve a mutually acceptable political solution between the parties. Mr. President, this assembly made a historic pledge during the World Summit held in 2005, a pledge to strengthen the United Nations with a view to enhancing its authority and its efficiency. In line with this pledge, Uganda has continued to support the cause for a revitalized, reformed, and effective United Nations system. This is critical to make the UN more responsive, efficient, and effective in its support to the member states' efforts to achieve the SDGs. Uganda welcomes and supports the reform agenda of the UN Secretary General to make the organization more efficient and effective. Uganda is proud to host the UN Regional Service Center in Entebbe that has proven over the years to provide the efficiency gains and cost saving that the Secretary General and the UN membership is calling for. Since its establishment, the Regional Center has grown and expanded with active support of the government. As the member states prepare for discussion on the Global Service Center model during this very session, Uganda looks forward to support by the membership for Entebbe as a location for a global shared service center. The need to reform the UN Security Council is more urgent and imperative now than ever before. Uganda supports the comprehensive reform of the UN Security Council. The present geopolitical realities are compelling for a comprehensive reform of the Security Council to make way for equitable representation. Africa, with more than one billion citizens and with over 70 percent of issues on the agenda of the Security Council has no representation on the permanent basis or permanent category of the Security Council and is also underrepresented in the non-permanent category. It is time 
that we address this long-standing injustice and imbalance perpetuated in the present configuration of the Security Council without any further delay. Uganda supports the common African position as enunciated in the Ezruin Consensus and set declaration on UN Security Council reform. We urge member states to work towards achieving progress in the negotiations on reform in the context of intergovernmental negotiations. Mr. President, the predicament of refugees continues to this day. Millions of refugees continue to live in countries facing economic and development challenges. Despite the generosity of host countries and international actors, the gap between needs and humanitarian funding of refugees and host communities has, in effect, widened. Uganda has maintained its open-door policy on refugees, and currently the country hosts over 1.3 million refugees, the largest number of refugees in Africa. Our approach to refugees is anchored in our pan-African spirit, where we regard refugees as our brothers and sisters fleeing conflict and distress, and who, in the first place, are looking for peace and are also looking for security. The influx and prolonged presence of refugees has had an adverse impact on the environment. Forests have been stripped as refugees need poles for houses, firewood, medicine, searching, fodder within and far from the refugee settlements. It is estimated that 15,000 hectares of forest and savanna woodland near several refugee settlements in the country have been lost. The circumstances of the refugees and host communities pose enormous challenges for the national authorities, which needs to be addressed as part of the international solidarity. Solidarity is not on a one-way street. We call for more equitable sharing of the burden and responsibility for hosting and supporting the world's refugees consistent with international commitments. Mr. President, strengthening South-South cooperation is critical for the achievement of the SDGs. We welcome the outcome of the second high-level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation held early this year in Buenos Aires, Argentina. That meeting underscored, among others, the need to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for achieving sustainable development and for building effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Finally, I wish to reiterate the readiness of Uganda working with member states in preparing for the South Summit in Kampala, Uganda in April 2020, April next year. We believe this summit will make a significant contribution to our collective efforts in achieving the SDGs. I thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to 
Thank His Excellency Rukahana Rugunda, Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda. I request protocol to escort His Excellency.